television was lily white. There were no blacks. You never saw a black on television. You didn't see a porter on a train. I mean, if you had a train, the conductor carried the bags on because they didn't want any blacks on television. And they didn't want ethnic types. They really wanted the shows to look like the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. The ad agency people would say, I want them to look like the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. So by ethnic, they meant they didn't want any Jews, and they didn't want any people that looked like city people. They didn't want any Italians, and they didn't want, but they particularly, you just couldn't get blacks. I finally did a baseball story on Philco, and at that point, there wasn't a baseball team in the country that didn't have a lot of blacks on the team. And I cleared an actor, an actor named Terry Carter, and that was an accident because they called and said, Terry Carter, she's okay. Yeah. And I thought, well, I don't need to tell them that. And I just put Terry on the show. So there was a black actor on the baseball team. What was the response? They called me to say, why didn't I clear the actor? And I said, well, I did clear the actor. And they looked on their list and it said Terry Carter was okay. So they, you know. It was approved, so that's... It's approved. There wasn't much they could do about it. We had cast an actor named Jimmy Edwards, who I think committed suicide, not after that, but sometime later, who had been in uh, one of those war movies, one of those, uh, those uh, prison camp movies, just enjoying a little success at the time. And we'd cast him as a judge in some Playhouse 90, and the agency people came in and were outraged that we had cast a black actor who was passing judgment on white men. And they absolutely made us, they, he, we had to replace him. It was an outrage. I thought Frankenheim was going to walk off the show. We had a terrible fight, but it was at the end. It was their show. They just, they had casting approval. It's the only time that we ever had to replace an actor because most of the time we never could clear a black actor. They knew that. In this case, I guess the name slipped by just as it did with Terry Carter, or they didn't think about which role he was playing. We actually did use some black actors later on in, in after sort of in, in the late 50s in parts, but not in major roles, but certainly never passing judgment on a white man. So basically it was an implied uh, system where you did not, you did not hire minorities or... Well, you just could, they wouldn't let you. I mean, you could, it wasn't a, yeah. implied. I mean, you just couldn't hire blacks. And uh, we, did, we used a lot of Latino actors on Playhouse 90, I mean, because we did a lot of shows late in Mexico, and we did westerns, and we had bandits from Mexico. Those days it was all right to have Mexican bandits. And we just, just over the years, we did a lot of shows that you know, had, a, had a, a Latino background, sometimes South American, sometimes Mexican. We actually didn't have any problems hiring hiring uh, Chicano or Latino actors. But we did have a problem hiring blacks. There just weren't roles for them. We just didn't do black shows. It was long. I think it changed much before Roots. I mean, I did the Harriet Tubman story in 65, I think, 64, 65. And that, I mean, that, that certainly was a black story. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any problem doing that. How do you see the industry today in that regard? Well, I think it's different. The truth was that the that up until the mid '60s, the shows were owned by the ad agencies, and the ad agencies had a particular audience they were playing to. As I say, they wanted their shows to look like the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. That was to whom they sold, and they controlled their shows. In the mid '60s. That changed, and they began to sell time on shows. Nobody, there weren't shows like the Armstrong Circle Theater or Kraft Music Hall or Borden's, whatever. They were just shows, and people bought into them, bought time. So then they became under the control of the network, and the network didn't involve themselves in that. They didn't. I mean, they want. They wanted ratings. They didn't care if they were black or Chicano or whatever. They, you know, they were more interested in a demographic thing than they were in, in race. And it just sort of went away. Again, it was just a business thing. And uh, once the ad agencies lost control, then there was no, that, that went away. We couldn't, it wasn't just black and white. You couldn't, you know, if you were sponsored by the American Tobacco Company, you couldn't say the word lucky on the show. And 
you couldn't say the word American if you were sponsored by Philip Morris. You'd have to say he came from the States. I mean, there were all sorts of things like that that, you, that were, seemed silly, but they were absolute rules.